So we've learned how to measure voltage DC. Although voltage AC, alternating current, so the wave voltage that's in the mains of houses and also in happens to be in this game gear, it's not as common as DC, but it's also important to be able to measure. There's rarely a case you'll use it, I think, in diagnosing and repairing. Generally, AC voltage is reserved for stepping down simply mains voltage into DC. Nearly every system runs on DC voltage um, for electronics. There's, there's almost no electronics that you'll deal with in general for repair that will have AC voltage on. But as I mentioned, we have a we happen to have a game gear here that does run on AC, so we'll take a look at how to measure that and also the safety precautions. So let's just jump in and have a look at voltage AC. So just like voltage DC, we'll turn the meter to the squiggly wave for voltage AC. We'll have the probe still in ground and the voltage probe. And then we should have voltage AC on the screen. We'll grab a game gear and a clean juice, connect it up and turn it on. And the systems come on, we have a red light that you can just about see. So we know this console's on. Before measuring AC, I'd probably do a basic probe on DC just to make sure the system is turned on and running. So for that, we just touch on the ground and say the five volts. And we know we've got five volts. Change it to voltage AC. And now to measure AC, because in voltage DC, we have a reference to ground here or your base reference, wherever the black probe goes. And it's the potential to the positive lead. On AC, it's a wave. So it's up and down and up and down. So it doesn't necessarily matter which way around you put the black and red leads when measuring AC. I know, for example, here is your 120 volts. And you can see this probe is just floating in mid-air at the minute, and we're still getting potential of 70 volts there. So if I was to touch this with my finger, I'm about as grounded as this probe is in mid-air. So my feet are on the floor, so I've got ground. And hence, touching this with this lead floating still shows 70 volts of potential there. If I was to test, say, the other side of the circuit that goes to the backlight that's actually running, you can see there's a much higher potential there. If I go over the ground of the transformer that's generating this and the AC here, you can see high voltage. Similarly to measuring AC with a DC mode, let's see what happens when we measure five volts DC using AC mode. So let's just touch that on ground and touch this on here. And you can see AC mode doesn't really read correctly. So it appears there is no power going to this pin. But if I switch it to voltage DC, you'll see obviously we have five volts. So just as importantly, when measuring AC as well as DC, if you're unsure of what's on that line, you wanna test in both modes to make sure uh, we, we know what voltage is on those lines. There's not many differences or pitfalls in AC measurement other than remember the same principle that if I touch this probe here, and where this probe is at the minute is just in midair. All it's telling us is that it's not saying this pin here is 70 volts because if we touch here, it's 420 volts. So all we're measuring is the difference or the potential difference in voltage from the black probe to the red probe. So you just have to bear that in mind. So with AC, this pin, if it was joined to here, can produce 400 volts. If it's joined to say this random pin here, to it's 400. If it's joined to say just a button over here, it's 200 volts. So it's all about the potential difference between the probes. But in general, if you're measuring AC, you'll have two points to measure. You'll have either a ground reference, which this is a ground reference voltage because the transformer is tapping off ground. So it's just basically a reference from ground that can generate up to 400 volts. And we'll see these when we get to using oscilloscope. You'll be able to see a wave like this as the voltage is generated on an oscilloscope. Uh, but with a multimeter, you can't see waves. You can only see um, the, the static values. One other thing to consider, when you probe points as well, these leads will add a load to the system that you're testing. So this will be called the system under test or the device under test. If you ever see DUT as an example, that means device under test. And that's this piece of equipment we're measuring. So when you apply your probes to a system, you will be impacting that system. High-end 
multimeters like this will add a lot less load than cheaper versions will give you more accurate measurements. So as a perfect example here, as a technical AC wave that should pick up and be measured as AC would be this clock on the game gear. This is a 31, roughly 31 megahertz clock. So this feedback here relative to ground gives a very fast 30 megahertz up and down wave. So in terms of AC, that peak to peak should read around three to four volts. You wouldn't really use a multimeter in voltage AC mode to measure that kind of signal. That would be classed as more of a digital signal that you'd use an oscilloscope to measure. But in theory, you'd expect this to measure some kind of AC because it is a fast AC signal. But if you see when we have got the console on and you touch over the signal, you get nothing on voltage AC. If we go to voltage DC and touch over, you can see it shows a 2.2 volts. Now it isn't technically 2.2 volts AC, it's a really fast clock signal that sits just above that around 3.5 to 3.8 volts. But this voltage DC mode will average that out and make it look like some kind of signal. So even though it's saying there's 2.3 volts here, if you look under the scope, you will see that's a completely different signal. So when we come to look at oscilloscopes, we'll revisit this and I'll show you what signal's going on there. But again, it's just another example of voltage AC being this kind of wavy waveform. You generally use for mains voltage or power voltages. You don't normally use them for digital voltages. So just bear that in mind when you see signals and you start realizing what AC and DC is, that if you know there's, say, um, a wave signal and it's low voltage, if it's not to do with power in general, you probably wouldn't use a multimeter. The multimeter is more used for finding voltage DC, the expected ranges, or checking for the safety of AC signals. Now, if we take a look at the expensive multimeters, you'll see we have a mode here that says low Z. This stands for low impedance. Now, this is a very good mode, but it's only available on high end meters. So I'll give you a show of it, but don't worry too much about it if you don't have this. Shows the AC voltage sign, but it actually does both. So normally these meters measure all these modes in high resistance, so high impedance, so that they don't affect the circuit too much. However, low impedance mode allows more accurate measuring because there's a low impedance, so low resistance path through these leads to the circuit on the test. This mode on the meter, you can see now we have AC and DC. So this allows us now, if we were to say probe this game gear like we did before, and we just touch on ground, and let's touch the AC. And you can see this AC gives us 390 instead of 420. So this will be a more accurate measurement, and you can see the screen here dimming under load. So you can see our low impedance, now low resistance path, is affecting the circuit more, but giving us a more accurate reading. So this prevents kind of ghost voltages, voltages that are present, but barely have any current or any potential. So that the minute, say, this could show 400 volts, but if I was to touch that, even with the slightest amount of load, it would clearly drop to 380. You'll also see that it says voltage DC is zero. Similarly, let's touch the five volt line and you can see it's smart enough to detect there's five volts DC and there's nothing on the AC. So this mode is really useful and you can just probe around in one go and go, oh, that's got high voltage on. Oh, that's got high voltage on. That's safe to touch and five volts. So it helps you to probe around without having to do both modes at once, as well as get a slightly more accurate reading. But again, only high-end meters will have this, even though it's a really good feature. I just thought I'd give you a quick demonstration of that mode. So what's left on this now? We've got the low impedance voltage mode. We've got voltage AC we've seen. The M under V just stands for millivolts. So it's just a more accurate measurement. So if we go to millivolts. You can see now the range is a really small voltage range. So 0 0.05 of one volt. So this is just for measuring really low voltage signals. It's the same as this mode, just more accurate for low voltage. You've got voltage DC we've covered, same for millivolts. And in this case, this is a temperature probe symbol. So once you're in this mode, uh, you could put a temperature probe in here and measure temperature. We're not going to bother with that one for now. We've covered the resistance and the continuity. Uh, we will now cover diodes, capacitors, and amps. So we can see how to use them too. And then that's generally the multimeter covered for how you pretty much use it for anything.
So hopefully you've enjoyed this lesson and learned something new about measuring voltage AC as well as the cool features you get when you pay more money. And for the next one, we'll jump into these few modes that are left before moving on to, I think, bench power supplies. Any questions or if you're unsure of anything or want more explanations, just leave a comment and I'll get back to you.